very lucky on TechCrunch that we get some really smart people on my show, but it's very rare to get someone quite as smart as my guest today. He was the first person to give Sergey Brin an internship. He got his PhD when he was 20, and he is famous, uh, almost legendary for his insights into technology and particularly into search. Uh, Stephen Wolfram, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Stephen is the uh, founder and CEO of Wolfram Research. Hi. Stephen, tell me where we are in the history of search. Well, I'm more interested in knowledge than in search. Search suggests there's things out there, you're just going to find them. Knowledge is really about what can, what can you know. Uh, what what uh, I've been particularly interested in is to take sort of all the knowledge that's been accumulated in our civilization and try and figure out if there's a question that can in principle be answered on the basis of that knowledge, can we automate the process of answering it? So some questions may have been asked before, their answers may have been written down somewhere on the web in the you know 10 billion pages or something on the web, those kinds of things. But there are plenty of other questions, questions that you know we see people asking in there, many millions every day, where we can work out the answer from what we know from science, from data that's been collected and so on, but we need to actually compute that answer. That's, that's been something that I've been really interested in doing. And I wasn't sure whether at this time in history it would be possible to do an interesting job of that. What the sort of the big surprise of uh, Wolfram Alpha that came out now four years ago and has been sort of progressively getting bigger and better ever since is that yes, at this time in history, it is actually possible to do a surprisingly interesting and good job of sort of taking the knowledge that has been accumulated in the civilization and being able to sort of automatically compute answers to questions on the Stephen, basis of Stephen, where it. are we then in that, in, in, in computing, in aggregating all there is to know about anything? Good question. I mean, you know, I used to take as my benchmark, you know, go into the big reference library and look around the shelves and say, you know, which block of these shelves have we done? Which ones haven't we done? We have various benchmarks like that. And I would say that, uh, uh, you know, at this point, we've we've done a lot of the obvious stuff. You know, we, we have a pretty good to-do list because every day people are asking us either directly on the web or through Siri, other things like that, uh, lots of questions about lots of kinds of things. And so we sort of accumulate this to-do list of, uh, of other areas that we should be covering. And, and that to-do list is about 20 years long right now, um, although I think we'll probably get it done because we're kind of speeding up. We'll probably get it done in, in another five and years. And what happens so. at the end of that 20 years? We know everything there there is to know. We know the systematic knowledge, the systematic pre-aggregated knowledge. Of course, there's, there's a lot more knowledge that's starting to come in through all kinds of sensors, all sorts of devices. The, 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 sort of the, the, the knowledge that is out there now is kind of almost book knowledge, database type knowledge. The knowledge that's coming in the future is more sort of sensor type knowledge that we then have to go and use our algorithms and so on to, to turn into things that are really uh, kind of in a form where people can assimilate them. Stephen Wolfram Alfram is a no, sorry. Wolfram Research is a is a for profit company. Most of our audience at TechCrunch are entrepreneurs. Where do you see the the most interesting entrepreneurial opportunities in this twenty year challenge? Well, gosh, I mean, I think that uh, the sort of the whole area of of where uh, kind of data data science. Uh, what one can do taking sort of all these different kinds of sensors. So, so one very basic thing right now is there's lots of kinds of things in the world that one can measure. Uh, we're slowly getting things that can measure all those things. Then we want to figure out, given all these things that we can measure, what can we figure out from those measurements? What can we deduce? What can we, how can we then take those measurements and make models of what's happening in the world, predict things about the world, figure out what to do next, how to make devices that can make use of all this knowledge, all this data that's coming in. Uh, there's, there's sort of a whole, whole spectrum of different things around that. Uh, Stephen, you, you recently argued or suggested or perhaps boasted that you were the most quantified person on the planet. Tell me Actually, what, I was a bit embarrassed by that. But, well, but I mean, you what, confessed what's... it then. You didn't yeah. boast it. You confessed yeah. it. Um, yes. Tell me what you meant by that and how that connects with these immense business opportunities in 
the development of knowledge economy? Well, so I've, I've been sort of a guy who's been interested in data for a long time. So I started probably 25 years ago or more, you know, collecting various kinds of data about myself and, you know, all my, you know, email sendings and my keystrokes and my, you know, later on my steps that I was taking and, you know, all, kind, all kinds of other data about myself. And I guess that um, uh, I happened to start doing that pretty early. And so a year or so ago now, I decided, okay, I better take all this data I've been collecting and just sort of putting in buckets effectively for all these years and see what I can figure out from it. And so I started doing some analytics on it and found out that I could generate all this nice sort of quantitative information about uh, every aspect of my kind of life and times. Um, I think I was I was pretty surprised because, you know, I wrote up a blog about it and things like that and, and people uh, 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 read it and so on. And I was kind of expecting that, that um, somebody would come out and say, oh, you think you've got lots of data about yourself. I've got gazillions of times more data than you have. But nobody showed up. So, so that's why I, I came to the conclusion that, that uh, I probably generated more data about myself than, than, than other people have. I think, uh, you know, what does one learn from it? Well, I've, I use that data sort of on an ongoing basis as sort of a feedback mechanism for, you know, how many keystrokes did I type yesterday? Well, did I get lots of work done yesterday or not? What was the kind of curve of, uh, of uh, number of unresponded emails as a function of time? Let me, let me see how that's progressing this week. You know, should I be taking more time to, to respond to email? Those kinds of things. I was so using it on you're using it mostly to make yourself, what, more efficient, more effective? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I also, looking back over 25 years, I can kind of it's sort of like being, having the automatic personal historian, so to speak, um, and uh, and learning some kind of larger scale features of, of myself, some of which I thought were nice, some of which I thought were kind of uh, uh, a little bit uh, uh, more, more mundane than I'd expected, but so it goes. Stephen, what do you think of Google Glass? Is this going to be a helpful product in this uh, renaissance of personal knowledge of personal analytics. I think the whole idea of augmented reality, which which Google Glass doesn't quite get at yet, but but as one gets sort of more elaborate, uh, you know, um, head-up displays and things like this, um, this this idea of being able to annotate the world in real time that that's a pretty useful thing. Um, I think that uh, sort of one of the things that will happen is. Uh, kind of more ability to to make predictions and models about the world so that you'll be able to see, you know, you're looking at something and you'll be able to see that little dotted line that shows what will happen, so to speak. And I think that's going to be a, an important thing. I think also the ability to sort of preemptively deliver uh, information and knowledge based on uh, your past history, your kind of personal analytics of your past history together with your current uh, environment, that's going to be a really useful thing. Intentionality, in other words. I'm not quite sure what that Well, what that the, the, the means. economics of intentionality, meaning that we know what people are going to do and we can build businesses around that. Stephen, okay, I, was, I was worried you were talking about philosophy there. So I, 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 I never talk about philosophy. I'll leave that to you. Stephen, tell me a little bit about Wolfram Research. I, I've always wondered whether you think of yourself as a software company or as a services, a research, a consulting group. We make products, basically. We, we have a small but rather successful consulting operation, but the, the, the primary thrust of our business for the last 26 years has been making products. There was, a big, there was a big noise about Wolfram Alpha when it came out. Where is it now? I haven't heard much about it recently. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, uh, lots of people use it every day. It's, um, so you're uh, happy with, with its development, with its commercial success? Uh, you know, one can always one can always be more commercially successful. I think it's one of those kinds of technologies where we've built something extremely unique. I mean, it's basically been sort of a, a 25 year odyssey to to build the technology stack that we've built. Um, I think that it's something where one's one's gradually starting to see ways in which that technology stack can really be used effectively. In fact, the thing you were just mentioning about sort of preemptive knowledge delivery, that's uh, that's kind of one of the big issues because Wolfram Alpha has tons of stuff in it. But people don't know what's in it. So it's sort of the, the issue is uh, sometimes you say, well, there's this technology, it's kind of thin. Um, we've got a situation where the technology is very thick. The issue is for people to know what's really there. And that's something that's, uh, that gets progressively easier as you're kind of preemptively delivering things to them. And that's something that will become uh, progressively uh, more, more routine as uh, kind of hardware and systems kind of develop. Well, uh, so Stephen, would you say that uh, Wolfram Alpha is the crown jewel, the best product in the Wolfram research uh, company? 
Well, we have we have two main products, Mathematica and Wolfram Alpha. They're very different. Mathematica is uh, a, a language that's uh, kind of the the biggest uh, kind of web of algorithms that that uh, have ever been assembled and gets used by R and D folk and education folk uh, all over the world. Many many things have been built with it. It's a very precise language that has a lot in it. Wolfram Alpha is 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 really kind of the consumerized drive by. Uh, kind of messy knowledge about the world thing. Actually, the most interesting products are the ones that uh, aren't yet out, that kind of are in between Mathematica, the precise language that people build millions of lines of code in, and Wolfram Alpha, a system that people just, you know, ask a, a one-line question to and, and get information about well, the Stephen, world. Stephen, what you're saying then, perhaps in 20 years when you come back on the show, uh, I will know exactly the kind of product you're going to develop because of all the data out there. Is that fair? I'm, I'm hoping it's a lot less than 20 years. I don't know when I'll be back on your show, but I hope that the, uh, the products that will arise will, will arise a, a lot sooner than 20 years. Well, Stephen uh, Wolfram, a, a real honor to have a guy uh, with your history and knowledge. Uh, and I look forward, as you say, to coming back on the show in much less than 20 years. Stephen Wolfram, thank you for appearing on TechCrunch TV. Thanks.